Hi everyone, welcome back to another Sketchbook Pro tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Perspective Grid tool with three vanishing points and create this arrangement of buildings using only the grid, the fountain pen and some gray tones to add depth and volume to the buildings. Three points perspective is not that commonly used, in contrast to two points perspective, since in order to really appreciate the third vanishing point, you need to either have the object in a very deep angle in regards to your point of reference or the object that you're drawing must be really big. Ideally, this perspective is used for architectural sketching since buildings, houses and open spaces are excellent examples for this drawing technique. You can see this in these pictures how the buildings are completely deformed and almost appear as if they were going to an infinite point. And the taller the structure, the more intense this vanishing point will appear. So to begin with, the three-point perspective grid is actually trickier as the previous ones since you need to be careful where to place the third vanishing point. Normally, the first two can be placed near your paper, either on the sides or edges of your canvas, or slightly outside and they won't cause any trouble to your sketch. However, the third vanishing point should really be far away from the canvas. If you leave it near the canvas as the other two, it will dramatically deform the picture, making it look really weird. This also reduces the realism of your sketch, so just be careful and try to put this point as far away as possible. Now I'll start by making a quick sketch that will serve me as a guide for when I'm drawing the final sketch, and then use my fountain pen to add some line weight to all the buildings. I'll be using black for this drawing and that will make the picture look cartoonish, but in the end we'll change the color to make the buildings look more realistic.
To start coloring the buildings, I'll use three main gray tones, and I always recommend you start with the lightest one, since you can have more control over the darker ones later on. The lightest tone in this case will be on the roofs, and it's the lightest one because it's where the sunlight will hit the surfaces directly. Then in a separate layer, I'll paint the right sides of the building in a slightly darker tone and finally the left sides with the darkest grey tone. Now these buildings have details such as windows and other areas I wanted to add and I'll use darker grey tones as well for these areas following the same rule of having the lightest grey tone on the right and a more intense grey on the left as you can see.
Then it's time to add some shadows to the picture. And what I'll do is duplicate each color layer, lock it, and then use my airbrush to start adding those shadows, especially in spaces that are near other structures. Finally, we can add a background color, and this time I want the buildings to have a darker appearance, so I'll go with some dark gray in a new layer behind everything else. The last step is to change the color of the line weight by locking the layer and using your fountain pen with your desired color. And we're done! Friends, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video tutorial and find it useful. If you want to try it yourself, you can play with different colors and geometries, not only buildings and high structures. Test different angles and vanishing points positions to see how they end up looking. Thank you so much for watching, again I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.